welcome to the season one final of Nerdazons. This is our Christmas special and the last episode for Series 2018. Five. Yes, so listen along and definitely stay tuned for the end because we've got some exciting news coming up. Yes, we do. Ah. I'm so excited. Okay, so uh, this month we're talking everything Christmas. and Except we're... for my penny judge for <laughs> It's not very Christmassy. Well, there is actually a tradition to tell scary stories over Christmas. Yeah. We'll get back into that. Yes, later. So this movie of the month is a Christmas classic. It's uh, Die Hard. Yes. If you don't know about the movie, where have you been all your life? Yeah. But in case you don't. This movie is about John McClane, an officer of the NYPD who tries to save his wife Holly and several others that were taken hostage by German terrorist Hans Gruber during a Christmas party um, at the Nakomi Plaza in Los Angeles. Nakatomi Plaza. I talk good (laughs) English. Um, And obviously it can, it um, is Bruce Willis. um, Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman. And Bruce Willis has hair. (laughs) (laughs) And he's still a babe. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I wasn't going to admit this, but it took me a little while to realize that it was Alan Rickman and that he was also in Harry Potter. dumbfounded that you didn't know that that was Alan Rickman. I know, don't, don't yeah. ever admit that in public again. Well, it's on, it's on, it's on the record now. I know, I know. Everyone oh. will know your secret shame. <laughs> um, no, great film. Like, it was really interesting. We were watching it just before we, we recorded, and it was really cool to watch it, like, now, where it's, like, what, 20 years? 20? No, no. 30. 30 years since it was done. It's 80, 1988. Yeah, so... So, 34 years on. No. I don't, 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 don't I'm good at math. Quick math. <laughs> no, but, like, it was really interesting to watch it in, like, today's Oh, yeah, today's 30s, standards. 2018, 1988. Yeah, yeah good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Now everyone else knows your secret shame <laughs> further. I'm going to hang my head and just not talk. <laughs> um, no, but like, like it was interesting to watch because there were so many things that we picked up and we're like, oh my God, that would not fly in today's standards. Um, but Like even, the little like racist comments and yeah, the... the um, sexist like work environment oh, yeah. and like the typical like 80s businessmen. Who are snorting so much co- cocaine. Yes. And such... it's like, he's the type of guy who would be caught out right now with all of his undoings from back yeah. then. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And like the lifts, you were talking about like the elevators and the lifts and things where like it was so easy to access um, when really like standards today, you can't like just jump around on top of them like they're bolted shut on the outside. So it's like not easy to just climb on top. Um, But like even this one just made me think how dumb like when the limo driver in an empty car park goes to reverse in a single car space like the limo is going to stick out like you'd think yeah. <laughs> being an empty car lot you would just drive and park across all of them but and that's yeah. so dumb but you know even with all the like flaws felt like comparing to today's yeah. standard it is still a good film to watch oh yeah 100% it's it's one of my favorites it's got anything you could ask for in a Christmas special it's got action it's got like Bruce Willis it's got Alan Rick Men, which, I mean, it's got comedy. It's got comedy. It's like family racist fun. comments, <laughs> sexism. <laughs> no, but it's it's a good film. Like yes. like the flaws just make it that much more fun to Absolutely. watch now. And you were saying that there's a little fun fact in the movie. So the um, I forget the cop's name, but the cop that helps him outside, he actually had a spin off. Um, TV series, which you would all know as Family Ties, and he's actually the same character. He plays the That's same awesome. cop character in that series as well. I love when he gets the like Twinkies, and it's like it's for my wife. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. She's pregnant. Yeah, yeah sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> <That's the best. laughs> but um, one thing I have to say, which I completely forgot until we watched it this morning, the credits. So they, they, it's like a typical like late 80s, early 90s like film where when the opening credits start, they show you the names mm-hmm. during a, or a scene that's running. And <sighs> we stopped and paused it and it took 8 minutes and 22 seconds for the credits to stop. No, they were still going, weren't they? 
I don't know, but we got to mm. that point when we realized, oh my god, it's still going, and we're watching the whole opening scene I know. with that, like those credits on top of the bloody image. So, but no, even all the faults, it's still a good film, and it still holds up. And yes, it's it's definitely a Christmas movie. Like yeah. I don't know, I understand people are like, no, it's not, no, it's not, no, it's set about a Christmas party. Yeah, and so, now I have a machine gun. Ho ho ho! <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. And the 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 bad guys just as soon as I. I because I haven't seen it for a long time. As soon as I looked, I'm like, is that Flash Gordon? Like, he just looked Was so... It? No, not really, but it just looked it like looked, him. The guy at the front desk? Yeah, with the over. blonde hair and yeah. the wispy blonde hair. I'm like, you belong in a L'Oreal commercial. Yeah, I know. Lovely, <laughs> lovely flowing locks. I wish I had hair as good as yours. I know. Guys always have, like, better hair. Boo. <laughs> Boo. Um, Boo-ons. <laughs> Boo-ons. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to your TV show. Okay, so, well, actually, it's a bit different this time, Steph. So we're doing um, Christmas TV specials. Uh, we both picked one that we really love, and then we each picked a Christmas special that's different to try and, like, you guys mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. So the let's start with the one that we both picked. It's obviously Doctor Who. Woo! <laughs> uh, um, and it's probably, yeah, like, one of the better Doctor Who's that we like. So the Christmas special that we're doing is Doctor Who. Um, Doctor Who. It's called um, A Christmas Carol and it was actually from 2010. Ten. Yeah, which um, we didn't think it was that far back. No, we were just looking going, no, it's not really eight years old. I know, That's right? crazy. I know, it was, it's, and it still holds up. But before we continue, I just want to ask something. How do you feel about not having a Christmas special this year? I don't mind. I know you do. I have like... I love having a Christmas tradition of waking up early, watching it straight away on ABC mm. iView, having a cup of tea with when I was living with my, with my parents, having a cup of tea with my parents, having like blue pancakes sometimes if we could be bothered, watching it first time it came out and then all just going back to bed. Yeah. But at least we're still getting a special, so we're getting a New Year special. But I, like I think it'll be curious because like I mean how much stuff could actually happen on Christmas Day? Like, like, what more can you do from it? Whereas New Year's Day, it's like, it's a whole other playing field. But also they are starting from the, um, like, they're starting completely fresh. Yeah. And, and starting a new tradition. And, like, we've already spoken about, I love this series. And I like that it's bringing new things. Because you can only, like, do the same thing season after season. And the, you know how the rumours were that we're going to get a season every two years? No, nah, we're definitely getting one next year. Yay! Hooray! I'm Merry really Christmas! Excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. So, anyway, let's go back to the Christmas Carol, spe- the Christmas special. So, pretty much what this one is is it's set in a another like planet, and this planet um, is controlled by kind of like the Scrooge type of person, which is played by Michael Gambon. Um, and he's kind of like the Scrooge, I guess McDuck. you could say he, he, he owns like everything in this town and like he's in control and he makes everyone's life miserable and, um, like Rory and Amy are going to crash very mm-hmm. soon. So the doctor's trying to get to, to the town to say, look, you need to help them. You need to, um, like allow the ship to land. And then, so what he does is it's kind of a really interesting thing. He goes back to when he, like Michael Gambon was a kid to try and see why he became like that and change his timeline to make him a a better person later on. But it Mm -hmm. actually kind of backfires a little bit. It does. But it's so beautiful. It is really beautiful to find that, you know, he was in love with another, with a woman and that she was frozen because she was... But like, was he though because if the doctor hadn't gone back he never would have gone down in okay so we should probably mention that um a lot of people who can't pay for things in that world will like offer their life and they get frozen um and that is like a life debt and he controls all of that so that's how he has become so rich and powerful and yeah as a child when the doctor goes back when he's a child he takes him into the big vault area where everyone is and he comes across this woman Mm -hmm. who's beautiful and then they keep opening up like the vault or like frozen sarcophagus mm-hmm. sort of thing and let her out and then he just eventually falls in love with this woman and but he can only spend a few hours with her at a time because he has to put her back because and it she was will every age every year at christmas every year at christmas and there were tears definite tears yeah but so like gorgeous. the music's beautiful uh, even like even though you know it's hot, like so cgi like the fish Sort of like dancing around yeah, in there like was midair is really fish pretty. Fish in the um, just out like the gravitational pull or something. Yeah, so so they were just out in the open fish, and it was just 
absolutely stunningly beautiful. It was. I really... This is my favourite Christmas special app. Yes. Yeah. yeah mine too. Because it's just, yeah, absolutely beautiful. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Just prepare the tissues if you... And I also really loved Matt Smith. I didn't like Matt Smith in the beginning. You know, at the beginning when they were like... When Amy kept talking about... And, and I travelled and it, we've been travelling ever since. That to me was really dumb. But once we got over the whole new Matt Smith thing in the new beginning, I actually really enjoyed Matt Smith um, until it became, until he regenerated and we got the, we got Clara. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Towards the end, he got a bit child, more childish and like he just, he was different and I didn't like him towards the end, but I still really like his first episode. When he became oh yeah, the Prisoner Doctor. Zero. Uh, that was like a really good app. That was that was a great episode, but um, but where yeah. did his eyebrows go? <laughs> <laughs> He's got such a big forehead. He does, but like if you if you noticed, he has eyebrows in the first season, and then he just they just disappear. They disappear. Maybe it's like he's just got really fair hair. Maybe. But we're getting way into this episode, so <laughs> let's um, hear Steph's uh, TV episode pick that she's decided to talk about. Okay, so this one um, is Black Mirror. There's um, an episode called White Christmas. This was a great episode, and if you've ever watched Black Mirror, it's all about how society, technology has taken over society and things. Um, and I know that you haven't seen it. I do apologize, but there are going to be spoilers. That's okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay, so um, this, the episode I'm doing is White Christmas. The episode is about three unconnected tales of technology run amok during the Christmas season are told by two men in a remote outpost in a frozen wilderness. Basically, what happens is there's John Hamm and he created this technology where you know how you would get Siri. What happens is... They take your memories in your out of your head, and they plant like a miniature version of you in a like a, in a pod where they where it's basically you. You know how you like your toast. You know how you like this. But what happens is when it when the when you're in there, um, you don't know what's going on because you know you just think it's Siri, but it's actually a miniature version of you that's alive. And it's oh. and so they just want to escape and things. It's really freaky, and it's made me think of that totally different. But um, what happens is John Hamm's character created that, and what they have now is um, you have a thing in your head where if you're having a fight or you don't want to see something, you can just block it, and you can block a person out of all your photographs. You won't show them on TV. It'll literally just be like an outline. And so they can't, when, you can't speak to them and that somebody can like completely delete you as well. Oh. And so what happens is John Hamm's character helps people date. So he's in their heads and he's like, oh, you need to say this to a person, blah, blah, blah. But what he also has is people online betting towards what's going to happen. And so he's helping a bloke talk to a girl and the bloke ends up dying. Oh. Because the lady's like, oh... I hear voices too. And he's like, no, no, no. And she's like, I hear voices too. And she's like, and then he's like, no, no, no. And like, they're, they're not voices in my head. And she ends up poisoning him because she's like, you're, you're like me, you're crazy. So this is all being broadcasted. So anyway, John Hamm gets into trouble. Yeah. And so he has to infiltrate another guy. Oh, okay. So what the other guy did is um, he was... He met a girl and the, and he started getting really infatuated with her and, and she ended up blocking him and he stalked her over the years and he went to the, um, her parents' place. He found out that she was pregnant and, he, and when you block someone, because they, they had fights so she blocked him and that, that means he couldn't see her or anybody or, or her spawn. So he found out that she was pregnant and he's like, that's, that's my child. And he was following years after years and found out that it was a little girl. And he's like, that's my daughter. And they went over to um, this, the bloke went over to her dad's house, ended up killing the father oh. by accident. And um, he um, found out what, cause, uh, and she, she passed away. And once she passes away, the um, block, is gone. block is gone. And he found out that that wasn't his daughter. <gasps> It was somebody else. So now John Hamm is stuck in a loop with this bloke so they can get the confession oh. about this. 
And so, and this all happens during Christmas. It is an amazing oh episode. Gosh. You need to watch it and I'm not going to spoil the end. Okay. Because there are just, I can see how excited you are about I, watching I'm it. I'm just like, oh my God. That's yeah, so I'm sorry about the spoilers. It's been out for a while now. But, but at least I did leave you a little nugget. Yeah. <laughs> that it is. It's kind of freaky. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I love about this Black Mirror. Every episode's different. And mm. if you do have a queasy tummy and you're just not really good with, I can't really explain it, but um, personally skip episode one. Yeah, because that was the problem I had. Everyone told me to get into it. It's really cool. And I really like the idea of this futuristic like dystopia because it, it, it almost feels like it's going to end up that way. Like when you hear the story, like different episodes that you know, you've know you told me. Well, the or... face, there's, a, there's actually an episode where – I'm sorry to interrupt you over there. But um, there's an episode where – Everybody is connected to social media and you literally rate everybody. You told me about that one. And that that is actually happening. Yeah. But yes, I definitely agree. Like definitely skip past because I tried and I was watching the first episode and I couldn't. If you like things like effed up and you like politics, (laughs) (laughs) watch it. I actually enjoyed season episode one because I really liked the what it was about it was about how people can corrupt their the the, gov- the government and how they can you know power to the people kind of thing yeah I really enjoyed that but there's this is one of my favorite episodes yeah it plus good. John Ham yeah can't complain and also Easter egg the um the chick that's inside the the Siri thing is yeah. I don't remember her name but she is the one out of Game of Thrones married to what's he, the stark which one the one who died at the red wedding oh the doctor the one that yeah, yeah, found yeah, the yeah, doctor yeah. that yeah, they yeah. didn't want to that's get married her. that's oh, her i don't know her name <laughs> yeah Oops. i'm sorry i don't know her name yeah either. so <laughs> tell me what you think of this episode it is great it was really a toss-up between this one and around the twist oh, yeah. um but i just thought around the twist is it wasn't that great after re-watching it <laughs> <laughs> when you're older <laughs> yeah that show doesn't hold up uh, all right, so that's enough of me. What's your Christmas? Um, I actually chose a Family Guy episode oh, yes. um, because I love this episode. Anything, any episode in Family Guy that is Stewie and Brian is a perfect mix. So you can't go wrong. And the episode is called Road to the North Pole, which is season nine, episode seven. And it's pretty much where, you know, they wait like hours in line to go and get a, like uh, see Santa and then Santa just leaves because he's finished for the day. <laughs> and then Stewie is pissed. He wants to go to the North Pole and he actually wants to go and kill Santa. <laughs> um, and it's just, it's like the, even the intros for a Stewie and Brian episode are great. It's like really classic. It's got mm-hmm. um, all the like classic photos and like the whole introduction. And like Seth, Seth MacFarlane um, has a very Frank Sinatra-esque voice. Mm -hmm. So when he does like singing, it sounds really, really good. And they're so creative with their music. So there's music all through it. Mm -hmm. Um, The songs are really great. You gotta listen to They're (laughs) hilarious. And like, even like, it's just little things are so funny. For instance, they're all singing in the beginning, but the TV was playing like a fireplace. It was the actual TV. And then I was talking to my partner and he goes, there actually was a TV channel that was solely a fireplace to give you the illusion that there was a fireplace in the room. (laughs) And I'm like, no way. There was actually a TV channel devoted to that. That's awesome. I know. It's really cool. And even like Stewie, like he's so like evil and badass and... But then he has his moments where he's still like a child. Like <laughs> at the beginning, he's just like, what are the odds that Santa comes to our mall out of the whole of the America? <laughs> We're the lucky ones. And I was just like, are you really that dumb? <laughs> like, it's, and, and like you can get yourself all the way to the North Pole, but you um, you don't realize that Santa's not real. But they, they like, like spoiler alert, they do actually get there. But then like it's it's definitely that's where it kicks off from there in the north pole like Mm -hmm. the music is even better one of my favorite christmas songs is there at least listen to the soundtrack if you can i try not to spoil it even though they're only 20 minute episodes i can't go into it anymore because i will ruin it because it's Mm -hmm. such a short episode you know it just it's a really good one they they also do tackle a really good message in that episode um it's set around the whole materialistic idea Mm -hmm. of christmas and like they're trying to show you you know it's not always about the presents and it's it can be about you know being together with people exactly Mm -hmm. so they really do um tackle that idea as well so 
Definitely a 10 out of 10 fun, like, Christmas set, yeah. special if you want to have a fun one. Also, Family Guy, you can't go wrong. Exactly. I love Family Guy. Yeah. I love all those, like, as you probably noticed. No, do you? <laughs> I never knew that you like cartoons. I do. Oh, my gosh. This morning we put the TV on and my partner had something on and then he changed it. It's like, fine, you can watch this. Then he put the cartoon channel. <laughs> I still watch the cartoon channel on yes. the weekend. So, but... There are all of our Christmas TV picks for you to go and have a little think about, mm-hmm. um, have a watch, watch Die Hard, all of that. So we let us know what you think of them all. New Christmas tradition, watch Die Hard. Yeah, we should. Yeah. Like, it should always be a tradition. Yeah. Although like one of my like tradition movies is always Nightmare Before Christmas. So Mine's Home Alone. So is my partner too. We have that here. Well, I mean, it is a great movie as well. It was overwatched as a kid. But anyway, off topic, let's move on to Steph's fun facts. Yes. Okay. So obviously I'm doing Christmas fun facts. So I've just decided to do um, different traditions around the world. So first of all, I'm going to start with Austria and Krampus. A beast-like demon creature that roams city streets frightening kids and punishing the bad ones nope this isn't halloween but saint nicholas's evil accomplice krampus is austrian tradition saint nicholas rewards rewards nice little boys and girls while krampus is said to capture the naughtiest children and whisk them away into his sack in the first week of december young men dress up as krampus especially on the eve of saint nicholas day frightening children with their clattering chains and bells i i love the story of krampus there was a um I think it was called a, uh, maybe a Ukraine film, mm-hmm. and it was, I don't know, either way, probably the best Krampus film I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. I, yeah, I, I only heard. Like, I know they redid one with, um, I think Tony Collette was in it. Oh. They did, they did, like, an American version of oh. it, um... This is going to bug me until I can figure out that movie name. I only found out about Black Krampus a few years ago. I was thinking, oh, what is going on there? But it's a great, you know, little thing to scare children to be good. I Yeah, it's a really cool idea. It kind of, like, reminds you of going back to the whole, like, Brothers Grimm, like, mm. origins mm. of, like, these stories meant to scare kids, not be, like, joyful and happy. Exactly. <laughs> While you're looking at what that's called, I'm going to move on to my next one which is um, a tradition in Norway. Perhaps one of the most unorthodox Christmas Eve traditions can be found in Norway, where people hide their brooms. It is a tradition that dates back to centuries when people believed that witches and evil spirits came out on Christmas Eve looking for brooms to ride on. This is the... Uh, to this day, many people still hide their brooms in the safest place in the house to stop them from being stolen. Wow, that's yeah. really cool. I know. <laughs> is funny, that though. like? Is that your favourite one of the year? I know. Or I is going to tell you at the end? I'll tell you at the end what my favourite one is. Okay, fine, <laughs> fine. Um, all right, and the next one is from the USA. This one I think is one of my favourites. The Christmas pickle is a tradition for some people in the, in the United States. A decoration in the shape of a pickle is hidden in the Christmas tree when, with the finder receiving either a reward or good fortune the following year. Wow, but wouldn't that stink? No, it's an it's a ornament shaped like a pickle. Oh, right, 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 right. So you just hide it in the middle of the tree and yeah. someone has to go and find it? Yeah. But then your tree would be, like, demolished if everyone's attacking the tree at once. Whoa, I don't know. I just feel like, oh, just, I don't, uh, yeah. Americans are weird. (laughs) But pickles are delicious. No. Yes. Sorry, no. Not for me. I don't like them. Rare Exports. Woo! That's the name of the movie. Um, It's a Finnish (laughs) film, actually. Sorry, not Ukraine. Uh, If you get a chance, please give it a go. Rare Exports is the best Krampus film I've ever seen. Really? It's obviously subtitled, yeah? Uh, yeah, me and my godfather okay. watched it. We like literally hunted that DVD down just so we could watch it because we saw a trailer and we mm. just like we have to watch this. And we like was yeah. it creepy? Yeah, but like not over the top. Like okay. um, I saw when while I was looking for this, the American remake in 2015 called Krampus. That's the one I was telling mm. you about. Um, it, they t- really tried to make it into a horror film, whereas this one. It was funny, but it was scary. It was and... like family friendly. Yeah, and it was enough to scare the kids, but yeah. still be funny. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. 
All right, so we're going to have Australia. In Australia, Christmas comes um, comes in towards the beginning of summer holidays. Children have their sum, summer holidays from December to early February. So some people might even be camping at Christmas. Christmas is too hot in Christmas mm-hmm. um, time in Australia. So there's quite often um, a lot of massive bushfires in the country. Many volunteer bushfires are involved in saving people and property and travel all over the uh, Australia. Um, Australians hang wreaths on their front doors and sometimes go out Christmas uh, Christmas singing on Christmas Eve. People al- also decorate their houses and gardens with Christmas trees and Christmas lights. Neighbours sometimes have little competitions to see who's got the best lights, um, light display. Actually, back where I'm from, Tamworth, we used to have um, a competition that whoever had the best lights got free electricity for the rest of the year, uh, for, the, for an entire year. That's insane. That's yeah. a really good prize. Yeah. But um, there was so many, and that's one of my favorite things is to go Christmas light. Looking. Yeah, I used to like that. Like, there's a out my way, like Campbelltown way. They um, there's a street sort of like there's a particular street that everyone goes to. It gets really packed. Like you have to park a car and walk through it. But mm-hmm. it's almost like you can't live on that street and not do it. I think they mm-hmm. like shame you for not doing yeah. it on that street. So it's yeah. kind of like oh, we never at the same did time. it. We couldn't be bothered. Um, so we only ever did Christmas lights once and we yeah. had this big like wooden like painted Santa in a um he was holding a BB can, he had a singlet, he had board shorts and he had sandals and his like <laughs> he, and he was leaning against his sleigh with all the presents and that was up on the top of our roof. Um right across the house where I used to live was some guy who put who had a chimney put a Santa there with his pants hanging down. Oh. And so Santa's bum would always be so <laughs> hanging out. Um okay so the neighbours often visit each other to look at the lights on display at night. Some of the displays put out early um, as December 1st. On one street in Sydney raises over $35,000 each year for charities to their coordinated streets display. Australians also decorate their houses with bunches of Christmas bush, bush, a native Australian tree with small green leaves and a cream coloured flowers. In some of the flowers turn a deeply shiny red over the period of weeks generally by the week of Christmas in Sydney. In each state and capital city, there are large carols by candlelight services. Famous Australian singers like The Wiggles, John Farnham, Anthony Kalidas, Nikki Webster, and many others sing to the carols. These carol services are held in different cities and broadcast across Australia. There are huge Christmas uh, pageants in each capital and they broadcast across the country. Most towns and cities have festivals and parades, some places, but there is also fireworks display in local parks. When he when Santa gets to Australia, Santa gives the reindeers and the rest of and the rest he uses kangaroos or six white boomers, a oh, popular yeah. Christmas song. He also changes his clothes for less hot ones. And growing up we used to leave a, a can of V B and some <laughs> some bickies. For Santa or... Carrots for the reindeer. And carrots for the reindeer or six white boomers. Mm-hmm. And um, also some Vegemite toast. Oh. In case he got hungry as well. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, which, you know, I was like, what, what's going on? And then I caught Dad one day. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you yeah. go. You found out. <gasps> Santa's not real. Uh-huh. Spoilers. <laughs> now, I'm going to do um, a few more that um, in Japan... Uh, fried chicken is often eaten on Christmas Day. This mm-hmm. is the busiest year of the year. This this is the busiest time of the year for restaurants such as KFC, and people can place orders at their yeah. local fast food restaurant in advance. There was an advertising advertising campaign in KFC in 1974 called Kentucky for Christmas, which was very successful and made KFC popular for Christmas. The traditional Japanese food for. Uh, Food is Christmas cake, but not as rich as fruity, but usually a sponge cake decorated with strawberries, whipped cream, and shortcake emoji is Japanese for Christmas cake. Aww. Uh, so that's my awesome fun facts that's, about Christmas. Um, pretty cool. You had yeah. quite a bit there. I know. Especially in Australia. I know. <laughs> yeah. But no, I like them, but it's the end of the year. I know. And my favorite fact is yep. still the Mike Myers mask. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. I bet you any money, it's the Mike Myers that's mask. The- best like um, absolutely I've ever heard ever and I had to like keep my lips sealed for so long over that <laughs> one just going I want to tell everybody about this fun fact it was so good I love it it's my favorite and I think you know what my favorite penny dreadful is but yeah. I'm going to tell you that afterwards yeah okay so 
For my last Penny Dreadful of the year, I want to talk to you about one of the most well-known unidentified serial killers of all time. Mm -hmm. It is one of my favorite stories, and it has kept me fascinated since the very first day I ever heard about it. Um, I absolutely love this story. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about the one and only Jack the Ripper and the Ripper Five, as they're called. What? Um, I only knew that there was just Jack the Ripper. I didn't know that there was five of them. No, they're the victims. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually going to get into the nitty gritties yeah. of the Ripper Five. Um, <clears throat> so if there is anyone who doesn't want to hear about it, or has a squeamish stomach, please skip to the end because we have some really awesome news I am mm -hmm. so pumped to tell you about. Mm -hmm. But I am going to get into it a little <laughs> bit more gory um, for this one. Oh. So let's start with what we actually do know So about Jack the Ripper. He was highly active in the Whitechapel district of London in 1888. At that time, it was a highly impoverished area uh, full of a lot of working girls and bars, etc. Um, mm -hmm. He was also known at the time as the Whitechapel Murderer and Leather Apron. So there's some other names that you may not have heard of. Mm -hmm. We also know that the Ripper's victims were typically working girls, or in another way to put it, they were prostitutes. Um, and they lived and worked in the slums of the East End of London. Mm -hmm. um, if you do ever decide to read more into it, you can read how bad it really was at that time. They, they kind of just shoved everyone in that area. You had immigrants and like the hygiene was really, really bad. Oh, I can um, imagine. It was, it was pretty like bad. Mm -hmm. So do have a good read into it a little bit. But there were five well-known victims, um, and their names were Marianne Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Udoz, and Mary Jane Kelly. So then, mm -hmm. known as sometimes the Conical Five, or I just refer to them as the Ripper Five. So they're the five main victims. Others around that are just speculated. Mm -hmm. They don't know if it's so with these are them. Con confirmations. Yeah, and one of them is uh, unsure. I'll mm -hmm. get into that. So, as I said, any sensitive viewers, please skip ahead. Um, I'm going to get into it now. So, Ms. Nichols was the first to be found out of the Ripper Five. She was found August 31st in 1888. Her death was quite mild to the rest of the murders. Mm -hmm. um, so, her throat was severed by two cuts, and the lower part of her abdomen was partly ripped open by a deep, jagged wound. She had several other incisions on the abdomen, which were caused by the same knife. So quite mild compared to the rest. Mm -hmm. um, Annie Chapman was the next victim. She was found on September 8, 1888. So it's kind of like eight days after the first victim. In the same situation, her throat was severed by two cuts and her abdomen was slashed entirely open this time. It was later discovered that the uterus had been removed. <gasps> yeah. The next one, it's kind of a duo. So... They were both found on the exact same night. So it was Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Doze. Mm -hmm. They were killed early morning of Sunday 30th of September in 1888. Stride was found first with the cause of death as one clear cut incision, which severed the main artery on the left side of the neck. The other two victims had had two cuts, so it's almost like he had improved by that time mm -hmm. to be able to do it within one swift movement. Um, one thing a lot of people don't know, actually really quickly side note, is all the victims died from the cut to the throat before any of the mutilation had begun. So uh, back to it. Um, so she had one clean cut across. Stride had an absence of any mutilations to the abdomen, which led to various debates, and it is still a high debate, mm -hmm. about whether or not Stride's murder should be attributed to the Ripper. Um, but most believe that it was attributed to the Ripper and he was interrupted during the attack. If the latter is true, then Miss Catherine O'Dowes, she suffered the fury of the Ripper for being interrupted. Um, she was found 45 minutes after the attack on Stride um, and just like the other victims, the throat had been cut in one swift motion, um, which again, that was the cause mm -hmm. of death. Her skirt was thrown um, up covering the top half of her body, so the intestines were drawn out to a large extent, placed over her right shoulder. Um, so they were pulled out and up. Um, they were smeared over with fecal matter. Mm -hmm. uh, a piece of about two feet was quite detached from the body and placed uh, between the body and the left arm. 
apparently by design. So that's what he wanted. Um, the lobe and oracle of the right ear were cut obliquely through, so he had mutilated the ears. Um, her face was so mutilated. She had cuts through both of her eyelids. She had multiple cuts across her nose, and some were so deep they went into the cheekbone. Oh. Um, the tip of her nose was also detached by a cut, um, which had also touched the nasal bone, so it had come through the bottom wow. part. Wow. Um, she also had cuts on each sides of her cheeks, which peeled up the skin to form a triangular flap. Um, her abdomen was completely laid open from the breastbones to the pubis area. Um, the belly button was almost detached, so it was just hanging on by a little bit of skin, and her rectal organs were tucked just behind the belly button. Her thighs and legs were completely cut up. She was stabbed in certain areas. Just like the others, her uterus was gone, but some of her organs were also gone as well. I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt there, but I didn't think it was this... Like, I, I, I know a bit about Jack the Ripper, but obviously not this much. That's why I wanted to get into it. And this is like... Yeah, like, wow. so I think with Jack the Ripper, like, made it PG-rated because mm-hmm. a lot of kids know of the Ripper, but yes. they don't know the extent Mm-mm. to what it was. This last one, I'll, I'll tell you the last one, then we can get into it. I, I still think, you know, she definitely had it really bad. The last one, you can actually see an, a police shot image back in 1888 of when they found her. So the last of the Ripper Five was Mary Jane Kelly, mm-hmm. and she was the only one found, like, not on the street. So she was in her single bedroom room at the time because you hired by room and by bed mm-hmm. and, and all of that. She was found in her bed. Her throat had been severed down to the spine, so he <gasps> had even got so much deeper. And the abdomen was almost emptied um, entirely of its organs. So the only thing that was actually missing from uh, the crime scene was her heart, though. So he must have just, like, emptied everything from her body and just left him and dumped him. Yeah, that that one's a pretty bad one. So I'll recap it. Mm -hmm. Out of the Ripper Five, Nichols was not missing any organs. Chapman's uterus was taken. Adoes had her uterus and kidney removed and her body mutilated, and Kelly's body was eviscerated and her face was hacked away, though only her heart was missing from the crime scene. So it, it like it's a pretty graphic thing. There was a Johnny Depp film that he did based. Oh yeah. I think it was something called around. I think they did refer to it as Whitechapel Murders or something, not as Jack the Ripper. Um, but yeah, so that that is a really interesting one, and like there were so many debates at the time because people thought. He was definitely of a higher class. He mm-hmm. had some medical backgrounds because yeah. when I was reading, like you can actually still find some of the coroner reports of that time because they yeah. were kept. Yeah. And like even the second last one who, who got really badly mutilated, he was saying they had some knowledge of the human body to be able to do what they did. Mm-hmm. Like when he, when you read the coroner's report, he said the body was still warm. They had to, he had to have been there within 30 minutes of them getting mm-hmm. there. So, like, for him to work that quick, he had to have some knowledge. Exactly. And because, I mean, you, like you said, you can't just slash and go. Exactly. You need to, yeah. Like, and to do it so cleanly. And, um. Do you think he obviously. He was never found. No, but with his victims, do you think he randomly chose them or do you think he chose they them? They were at- always, like, uh, the, there was a book I read recently and I really did enjoy it. And he, the, the author do- um, delved completely into the backgrounds of these women and they all had the same motive they were all women of the night Mm -hmm. they they were all older women who Mm -hmm. had you know have they have had children they have been married Mm -hmm. but they were all drunks so in Mm -hmm. the end you know the partners had always left them Mm -hmm. and they were forced to you know go and work on the street um and in that area so they all had the same motive they Mm -hmm. would quite often be like end up in jail for doing what they've Mm -hmm. been doing Mm -hmm. but then they come back out so Mm -hmm. um and it's really cool he he went into the whole fact of what they were carrying and everything because because at that time you paid for a bed you Mm -hmm. didn't own anything you just paid for a bed to sleep in for the night Mm -hmm. and then the next night that bed can't be promised to be there Mm -hmm. so you just had to have the money so like everyone carried everything and like everything was documented yeah um but it just i knew a lot of people know of the story of jack the ripper attacking women of the night but i don't think many people knew how bad it was no i certainly didn't know that yeah can I just say my favourite one of the year? Yeah, go for it. I actually have two. 
I know which one of them is. Tell me. Madame La Lurie. She's actually my third. No way. Yes. You like said you got nightmares and everything I on did. that. However, listening back and going back, Eliza Lamb freaked me out. Yeah, it's a sad story. And that's heartbreaking and just, mm. that to me is, that gave me nightmares and I'm super, like that was just wow. And also um, Catherine Knight because it happened in Australia and that it yeah. happened so close and that it was in Australia. I, I think know. that freaked me out. And hearing what was said, what what you told me off air yeah. about what she did, it was vile. It is. It was vile. And, yeah, just absolutely, utterly disgusting. That was a really uh, shocking twist. I never thought you'd pick those, yeah, those ones. Yeah, I like to keep you on your toes. I know. I'm glad you liked mm. them. But that is to round off my Penny Dreadfuls for season one. So... Can I please tell them now? Oh, okay. Okay, okay. So I'm really, really excited. So season two will happen in January. We have got some great new ideas coming and I am so excited for this. So the layout... Same. I know. I have, just, uh, I have to tell you now. So the layout is actually going to change. So instead of us doing a movie and two TV shows, we're now going to do movie comparisons. Or TV comparisons or book to movie comparisons. Exactly. Doing so comparisons. It's, it's completely comparison. So we might do an original film back in the 30s and a remake back later in like Mm -hmm. um the new millennia like we are going to do books to movies like you said Mm -hmm. maybe comic books to movies like we are going to compare so what we are now going to do is we're going to tell you the movies that we do the month before Mm -hmm. so that way you can watch them and follow us along as we get into the comparison so there will be spoilers of the movie so do make sure you try and watch them beforehand um and then do you want to tell them the second part I'm, i'm i'm a little bit sad to see that the Penny Dreadfuls and Fun Facts are leaving us. Not completely. Not completely, but we do have a new segment called Nerdazon's Ner- Nerdazon's Nerdy Notables. Is it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> we only yes. just came up with it this morning and I yeah. had something I had something different in my head. What was um, yours? Nerdazon's Nerdy News. How about we put a poll? Okay. On Facebook. And you guys tell us which one you like. So with this segment, um, do you want to tell them about the segment? Yeah. So we're going to be looking at um, fan theories of different things. Um, Any fan fiction that we have, any just randomly funny stuff or nerdy stuff that's happening in our lives. Um, basically, it's us to talk about whatever we want. Yes, so we're it's not our podcast exactly. and not yours, and we can do what we want. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Just so, like, back to the fun facts and the penny dreadfuls. They're not going to completely go. We could happen to find new mm-hmm. ones for the next season that we will talk about. But this just opens it up a bit, and you guys can definitely let us know what you like to hear from mm-hmm. us. Um, so you know, if you like the fan theories or if you like the fun facts, mm-hmm. let us know what what you guys like, and we can do more. I of guarantee. That. My fun facts will not be leaving anytime soon. I know they won't. You're just no. always like that. But drum roll, please. Okay, so the first movie that we are going to do for season two is we are going to compare Suicide Squad to the cartoon movie Batman Assault on Arkham. <sighs> I'm so excited. I'm so I know. Excited. So make sure you watch them. I'll repeat it again. The cartoon is Batman Assault on Arkham. Arkham and the movie is Suicide Squad so if you've got a chance with the cartoon one you can actually find that on Watch Cartoon Online it's a free streaming service online so do load it up have a look watch it trust me you won't be disappointed if you watch that one and I mean we've all seen the other one we just won't go into that too much (laughs) let's leave that for season two so happy new year merry Christmas merry Christmas and we hope you guys have a great holiday